Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. Hey, welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found. And of course, tape live at the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. Apologies to our Twitch crowd. There was like about 150 of you earlier uh, when my power went out at Casa de Steve. Then I had to d- back up my mobile studio and head on over to Casa de my parents. Yeah. And uh, that's where I'm at now. You're, so you're like George Harrison and get back. You're bringing in your, your eight track. Yeah, exactly. It cost me 10,000 quid. Um, so I went to my parents' house. So if you're watching this on the YouTube, this is my dad's man cave. So that's what's happening here. Uh, in case you were wondering. Uh, so yeah, there you go. I don't think we have any program. Oh, I guess we do have program. You know, this is coming, uh, Wednesday. We've got winter is coming. We're going to do an actual watch along yes. of, uh, AEW's dynamite cause it's a special episode. Um, and, uh, I guess we can just sort of dovetail into, what we might be expecting with winter is coming in, what Tony Khan has suggested possibilities uh, coming up just in AEW generally, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he was interviewed by Dazen in advance of this Wednesday's Winter is Coming. And when asked if there would be any surprise debuts during the show, this is what Tony Khan had to say. These transcripts are from WrestlingNews.co. Quote, I'm more than aware there's a number of free agents out there, wrestlers I admire too, but I've got to say that you just have to keep watching over these next few weeks and not just winter is coming. There's the Holiday Bash special from Greensboro, North Carolina. That includes the Christmas Day Rampage. We had the last ever episode on TNT, followed by the debut episode on TBS. There's Battle of the Belts coming in January. I want AEW to run shows that you just can't miss. And I think these next few weeks are going to be really exciting for fans of wrestling. Uh, so, I mean, obviously there's a lot of free agents out there. You have, uh, everybody who was wrestling for ring of honor. Um, a lot of those people or those, their contracts, if they haven't, uh, already expired, will expire at the end of the year. Um, uh, obviously a lot of people this year were unfortunately released by WWE. Um, so it, it generates a lot of excitement thinking about who's going to show up on what show now, but you know, and back in, in the attitude era days and Monday night war days, that was a lot of the fun of watching wrestling. People were switching companies so often that it was it was genuinely exciting to tune into a show. It's like, oh, I like that person in WCW. Oh, maybe they're in WWF. Maybe they'll finally get a chance now. You know, it was exciting. Yeah, no, I that, that's been the the primary excitement. I mean, we all remember, of course, All Out this year, probably the pay per view of the year. Which, by the way, you'll be able to vote on because I think tomorrow I'm I'm whipping up like a little bit of artwork for the thumbnail for this thing. Uh, the friend of awards, we're putting out our uh, Google Doc surveys like everybody else. will be able to vote on pay-per-view of the year. And uh, my vote right now, spoiler alert, it's going to be all out. Mm-hmm. Because of exactly what you're talking about, we had Daniel uh, Brian Danielson, we had Adam Cole, we had Ruby Soho. Um, so, yeah, and then there's just a ton of names on the wrestling free market. And, uh, and it's going to be interesting to see which names, I mean, obviously, you know, we've said this a million times, everybody knows this, AEW can't pick up everybody, but, um, you know, some of the bigger names out there, I'm not sure, uh, I mean, he mentions all these shows coming up, uh, the, the, when Keith Lee was released, what was his, what, he, he'll, he'll be available at what point? February, I, I believe he was released uh, in November, if memory serves. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, you know, assuming he has a 90 day no compete, uh, that would mean mid February, I think. Mm hmm. Yeah. So he'll be available for Revolution, which is in early March. Mm-hmm. Um, another name coming up, uh, his contract expiring. Uh, Kevin Owens, Gargano's contract just expired. Same with Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, same with Kyle O'Reilly. And then, yeah, like you said, Everybody we saw this weekend in Ring of Honor, we're going to talk about uh, Final Battle here in a second, but uh, everybody there, um, I mean, obviously they already picked up Jay Lethal. Um, You know, I mean, obviously the big story of the year was WWE and and releasing everybody, and so there's just a ton of people out there. Um, So, yeah, I don't know. Besides besides some of the obvious names, besides the four we've mentioned, Keith Lee, Gargano, O'Reilly, and and, and, uh, Kevin Steen, what are the names that you'd like to see over the next couple months in AEW? Who do you think would fit? Ember in well? Moon. 
Ember Moon's a great, that's a great name right there. Yeah. That's a really solid one. I'd be super excited um, to see Ember Moon anywhere, but to, to you know, uh, AEW obviously is outside WWE as the largest platform for mm-hmm. wrestling. Mm-hmm, Love yeah. to see Ember Moon in AEW. There's so many boxes that she ticks. Like she is, she is legitimately one of my favorite in ring wrestlers. Yeah. Like WWE never really got me to care much about her as a character, like outside of the ring, but inside the ring, you won't find anybody who's more fundamentally sound and more, you know, all of her punches look real. She's mm-hmm. just a terrific wrestler. I would love to see her there. Um, I think that'd be terrific for everybody. No, that, that, that's a really good name. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I, I do kind of feel like last year's winter is coming was such a, it was such a big moment for AEW that I, I don't know. Like I don't see any title changes going down this year although i guess they've already so they've announced the the main title they announced a, a d versus sheeta that's not a title match mm-hmm. um the tbs thing no the tbs thing is happening on the tbs show yeah um, i don't think the finals for that would be on the tbs show yeah yeah um so i mean i you know which only leaves you know sort of new arrivals new signings yeah. showing yeah. up well i mean uh, it, we'll we'll get to it more detail later on during the final battle results but uh, you know, uh, FTR showed up at the show to confront the Briscoes. Maybe that's something that could happen. Uh, mm-hmm, winter yeah. is coming, but in the coming weeks, if they do that in AEW TV, yeah, that'd be know. that'd be pretty. I mean, God, talk about a stacked tag division. If the Briscoes show up, um, that'd be that'd be that'd be pretty crazy. That'd be something else. FT, FTR, you have to really appreciate. You know, AEW has done such a good job of. When they bring somebody in, it might take a little while, but damn it, they nail them eventually. Mm-hmm. Like they really do. Like he, I still feel like we're only seeing the very beginnings of what Malachi Black is going to have to offer, and yeah. Andrade for that matter. Yeah. But like you know, if you think about when Miro first came in versus what Miro is now, if you think about FTR when they first came in versus what FTR is doing now, like their presence at that Triple Mania radius was freaking outstanding mm-hmm. and then they show up there in ring of honor trying to cause riots again it's it's really really cool stuff um so so yeah there, there there's a lot of great names out there obviously aw is not going to be able to get everybody mm-hmm. um and hopefully i mean i don't know man there's so many great indie promotions these days that are popping up that you know have great looking shows hey shout out by the way deadlock pro wrestling had yes. their first set of tapings yes. this past week yes yes seemed like they drew a really good crowd yep there's a there's a rumor that a podcast you guys are listening might be listening to might be sponsoring one of their shows. Um, that's a new rumor, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, uh, Deadlock Pro yes. Wrestling has. To offer. Thousand percent, yes, yes. Shout yes. out to those dudes. Yes, uh, I think their first actual like a uh, uh, like pay per view event thing is January eighth. Yep, I want to say. Yep. It is. Um. So yeah, that that that's fantastic for them. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We can. We can use that then to segue into our next story about bad things in indie wrestling, oh, Larson. Gosh. So <laughs> I was not aware of this till I was perusing Twitter and and, and noticed the a tweet by Sean Ross Sapp, which led me to this. So wow. So indie wrestler and wrestling YouTuber Hannibal Hannibal TV. Some of you might be aware of Hannibal TV. Uh, took things way 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 too far during an indie show of the weekend when a spot apparently didn't go as planned, and then he proceeded to choke out and stab a a referee repeatedly in the head with his weapon, a spike. So the show happened in Irving, Texas, and according to eyewitness accounts, so Sean Ross Sapp reached out and got some uh, accounts from people who were there at the show, and then one of the referees who worked the show, uh, it actually was involved in Hannibal's match, posted a lengthy detailing of what he saw, what he experienced on Reddit. Here's kind of like the abridged version, seemingly, of what happened. So... Hannibal and referee Lando Del Toro, who I, uh, my understanding is Hannibal brought this referee to the show, uh, planned a spot where Hannibal would safely attack the ref following his match, and the ref would blade and bleed, you know, but in a controlled situation. However, based on accounts, it seems as if maybe the ref had difficulty blading or something, and that apparently set Hannibal off, and he proceeded to choke out uh, Del Toro till he passed out, and then stabbed him in the head several times, repeatedly several times, with this spike, causing him to bleed profusely. Uh, Del Toro was taken to a local hospital for treatment, later showed off his 
nasty injuries on Twitter. He had several lacerations and cuts that were stapled shut. Um, it looked bad, 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 bad. There's absolutely no place for this. No place for this in, in wrestling. Really? You know, you go in the yeah, ring, you go in the ring with people, you're, there's a level of trust that's expected. Yeah. And when you violate that trust, that's, that's awful. Absolutely awful. Yeah, man, I can't, there's not really a whole lot more to add to that. I, it, it'll be interesting to see if this gets the desired outcome that I guess Hannibal wanted. He, he builds himself as the blood hunter, apparently, which, you know, mission accomplished, I guess. Um, yeah, dude, there's like kids in the crowd. Apparently it's supposed to be like a family friendly show. And they basically saw like a live snuff film go down. Uh, luckily, the guy, you know, when you when you choke, when you legitimately choke somebody out to the point they pass out, you're you're you might kill them like that's that you have to be really careful with that stuff um you know i it, it just if you're like you said there's a level of trust that you have to have now i, I had read on twitter in a lot of the replies on on some of the videos of this that you know hannibal didn't have the best reputation um lately on the indie circuit with that kind of thing so I just people need to they, they really need to understand what they're getting who they're who they're getting into business with when they do this kind of stuff and I don't know if this is the his way of I mean obviously this is him wanting to get you know oh I want to get heat I want to I want to you know become notorious for something but it might just end up losing them a lot of money in bookings you know because an angle like this it could it, it it could generate the appropriate amount of heat if you do it right, but this isn't really the way because here's the thing, because you see all sorts of I saw a lot of people also on Twitter, which you do, and in the YouTube comments with some confusion as to whether or not hey is this real or is it fake is it a work or is it a shoot, um, even if it's even if the entire thing. From beginning to end, including this guy passing out and him getting bloody, even if this, you know, this referee was cool with everything that happened, it's not going to get you the desired response because the people that that think it's, you know, that he went too far, this is going to turn off some promoters who are like, I don't want to deal with this guy. He's, he's cutting open a bunch of reps. So, like, even if the whole thing, the entire thing was staged, I don't think it's going to get the desired response. But clearly, I mean, look. I can, I, I, I read the tweets from the ref and he seems, and again, I can only take him for his word. And again, this is professional wrestling we're talking about. He said this went too far. Yeah. You know, and I, I hope that he's being legitimate there not just, you know, working us or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it's dude, it's entertainment. It's a, this, this, the days of kayfabe are pretty much done. You know, you can only go so far. We all understand what's going on in there. And if yeah. I bring my kid to a wrestling show, which unfortunately I, she's too young for that. I see, I was watching, um, I got on the, uh, I was perusing through some of uh, independent wrestling TV's um, uh, library. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at some uh, IWA mid South because they have, they have some hardcore stuff yeah, there. Yeah. And I was watching one of their late, later, latest shows. Um, and, uh, and, you know, there's like, you know, women with their infants in the crowd and I don't think they did anything hardcore on that show, but you know, people bring their little, I was watching some West coast pro wrestling uh, mm -hmm. this weekend too. And there was like some little tiny kids in the crowd too. And I don't know, I, I, I don't do that, but, but I understand if I check out a wrestling show, if I look at the advertising it's like, Hey, family friendly, this is something I can bring my kids to knowing that the wrestlers aren't going to go too far with their language or with the brutality in the mm -hmm. ring. Mm -hmm. And then you see this happen. That ain't, that ain't good, man. Yeah, it's not good. It's terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. Yeah. I, I, was watching, gotta, I watched that, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's, it's pretty gnarly to watch. It's it's. I, I watched it, and I was like, man, I really hope that everybody knew what they were getting into with this, but unfortunately, it seems like that might not be the case. All right, let's take a quick break here to get a word in from our sponsor, Decked. So, Larson. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard the story. You've got like a truck owning friendo who goes to a friendo's house for a few hours. Maybe that they're watching a wrestling pay-per-view or something else. And they completely forget about all the stuff they left in the bed of their truck. Then when they go back to their truck, they discover that while they were at their friendo's house, the heavens opened up 
and dropped rain or snow or something and completely ruined everything they left in their truck bed. Yeah, I've heard stories like that. Next time I do, I'm going to tell that friendo about decked. The deck drawer system is weatherproof, which means it'll keep your stuff safe from the elements. I'm talking rain, ice, snow. Also, the deck drawer system makes organizing and accessing everything in your truck bed so much easier. Yeah, each of Deck's two full bed length drawers can carry up to 200 pounds of whatever you want to put in them. And the drawers roll out about waist high, giving you easy access to your tools and gear. Plus, Deck is 100% made in the USA and backed by a lifetime no hassle warranty and offers second to none customer service. Getting decked is the best thing friendos out there could do for their truck, especially this time of year. Protect your stuff. Get your deck drawer system at deck.com slash raw and get free shipping. That's decked.com slash raw for free shipping on your decked drawer system, decked.com slash raw. And let's get a word here from our sponsor, Manscapes. So Steve. Yeah. The holidays are almost upon us. Yay. So it's Woo. time to start thinking about what gifts you're going to give from Santa's sack. And if you want to make sure that the people in your life take care of their sack, then give the gift of Manscaped, the leader in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their top-selling performance package 4.0 has what a guy needs to keep their package off the naughty list. Yeah, it includes Manscaped's lawnmower body trimmer, the best trimmer for balls, butt, and body, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, both fantastic products. But let's not forget the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner, which help keep your undercarriage fresh and clean. Yeah, and if you order a performance package right now, you'll get two free gifts, a great pair of Manscaped boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Or if you're looking for stocking stuffers, Manscaped's got you covered too with shampoo, body wash, cologne, even ball wipes to help keep your sleigh bells from getting too stinky. Whether you're shopping for your partner, dad, brother, or friend, though, get them a gift they'll actually use, but make sure to hurry to get these gifts so they show up in time for the holidays. Right now, you can get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com with code RAW. Again, get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code RAW. Be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. All right, before we get back to the show, let's take a quick break here to get a word in from our sponsor, Credit Karma. Hey, Larson. Yes, Steve. Do you ever feel overwhelmed when it comes to handling personal finances? Oh, yeah, all the time, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're not the only one, man. Whether you're looking to pay for an upcoming expense or refinance credit card debt, Credit Karma is there to help you make those huge financial decisions with more comfort. Yeah, Credit Karma uses your credit data to show you personal loan offers that are personalized to you. It's completely free and easy to sign up for a Credit Karma account with no effect on your credit score. With Credit Karma, you can check out multiple loan offers side by side, and members who compare loan offers on Credit Karma save an average of 30% on interest rates. Once you get your loan, Credit Karma can help you track your progress as you pay off your debt. And we'll even let you know if you can refinance and save. Ready to apply? Head to creditkarma.com slash loan offers to see personalized offers with your approval odds right now. Go to creditkarma.com slash loan offers to find the loan for you. That's creditkarma.com slash loan offers. Uh, another pretty big, huge event. And honestly, in any other year, uh, the end of Ring of Honor would probably be a much bigger story. But there's been so many huge stories in 2021 mm -hmm. that unfortunately this is sort of not even in the like top three. Well, also they're seemingly kind of on the fence about the whether this yeah. is the end of Ring of Honor or not. All the video messages yeah. they had, kind of paying a tribute to Ring of Honor from former Ring of Honor athletes, CM Punk, Brian Danielson, Young Bucks, Adam Cole, yeah, uh, Hangman Page, so on. Uh, you know, seemed to indicate that at the very least, this is you know, obviously I think it is an end of an era for Ring of Honor. They're shutting down for a few months, kind of seemingly reevaluating how they're going to go forward. Not only, I, 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 you know, from a business perspective, but maybe also they're going to repackage the brand entirely. You know, who, who remains to be seen what this new Ring of Honor is going to look like if there is a new Ring of Honor. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, they are kind of towing the line between this is goodbye or this is see you later. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, <coughs> excuse me, seemingly several angles, or at least a couple angles that happened to show that you think would have to play out down the line, mm -hmm. you know, whether that's well, yeah, in Ring of that's, Honor or yeah. elsewhere. 
Yeah, I, I get the feeling that elsewhere is probably where some of these things are going to turn up. So, like, yeah, like you said, I, I, I watched um, I didn't watch the pre-show. I didn't even know the pre-show was available or not. I, I don't know. Probably was. But um, I didn't catch that. I caught the rest of the I caught the actual show itself, though. And, yeah, like you said, they, they totally were, um, uh, 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 you know, walking the line between like, for example, during the, the Ring of Honor television championship match. Uh, Rhett Titus won that and they said hey or, during the match they were saying whoever wins this is going to be the final mm-hmm. ring of honor television champion and it's like okay so that's interesting but then they're setting up angles with Roxy after her win against Willow Nightingale which is a really great match by the way uh, with Deanna Perrazzo coming out mm-hmm. challenging for the ring of honor women's title um, uh, chances are that'll probably happen obviously where Deanna Perrazzo is an impact mm-hmm. and uh, it wouldn't shock me to see Deanna pick up that knockouts title back for Mickey James. And she's going to be walking around as, you know, the Kenny Omega of 2022 mm-hmm. with, you know, three different titles. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, it does seem, it would not shock me at all for Jonathan Gresham to walk into terminus with the ring of honor title. Maybe not. Maybe he just wants to establish that as his own thing, but it wouldn't shock me because yeah. the ring of honor title is a prestigious title. It is. Still it is. To this day. And, and given his, reputation and what he has built himself what what he has built for his own brand um wearing that ring of honor title just seems fitting for a guy you know yeah, yeah. um for him so uh maybe he'll use terminus to defend that title i don't know yeah i don't, I don't know, know. Either. i could see it happen i mean and after uh, the winning the belt i believe he said he you know inferred that he wanted to wrestle brian danielson to cm punk so he might, I mean, he might defend that in AEW. That's mm-hmm. a possibility. Yep, it's a possibility. We had, uh, as mentioned earlier, FTR come out and confront the, uh, the the Briscoes after they reclaimed the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. That could happen, you know, on in, on AEW TV, on pay-per-view. It could happen, uh, right, yeah. you know, whatever Ring of Honor ends up being in April. We just don't know. It did seem like, you know... If this is their goodbye, I appreciate that they took the opportunity not just to celebrate the history of Ring of Honor, because there was that great bit. There's a really great bit uh, uh, during uh, uh, the, what is this, like an eight man Mm -hmm. between EC3, Taylor Russ, Tracy Williams, and Eli Isom uh, versus, uh, what's Brody King's outfit? Violence? Unlimited. Unlimited, is that what it is? I think so. Uh, It was Brody, Homicide, Rocky Romero, and Tony Deppin. And they all just started doing finishing moves from Ring of Honor's past. Yep. So you saw a muscle buster, you saw a haluva kick, you saw like a, um, yeah, a cattle mutilation. You saw a bunch of different uh, finishing moves and, and signature moves of various, you know, Ring of Honor champions. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, they did a great job of paying homage to the past. Like you said, they had those Matt Chat questions come in from uh, Punk, Danielson, Cole, Hangman. Um, but you also saw ring of honor set up the future for a lot of these talents and for potentially i guess their own titles um you know the even setting up ec because ec3 has his own you know the own the narrative promotion or 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 series i guess is what it is um you know with with uh uh, titan adam share who made an appearance at final battle yeah who, who looks by the way amazing who just looks absolutely amazing. Maggie here in chat says, I can't recommend control your narrative one and two enough. It's so much, it's so much fun and refreshing. I have not seen those yet, but everything I've, I've, I've read and, and heard makes me want to, I I've been meaning to at some yeah, point. Yeah, all, all the video packages at EC three is put together for the control your narrative idea, you know, everything yeah, the shows yeah. the, 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 I saw one, uh, I think Saturday or Sunday that was like a package hyping up, you know, this philosophy or whatever of controlling your narrative. And it was really well put together, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He really, he really really seems to have taken that concept of, you know, when you get the, 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 the WWE release really running with it in, in a really interesting, uh, conceptual way. Um, but yeah, no, I, I just appreciate that they, you know, for example, Bandito came into, came into this ring of honor champion, Mm -hmm. right? But, uh, According to them, according to the broadcast, he had a positive COVID test, so he couldn't go to the show and defend the title. Um, and so instead of saying, OK, well, he'll just be Ring of Honor champion, they did the right thing. They had Gresham and Jay Lethal, who was there, you know, thanks to Tony Khan. 
And uh, and and they had that that great match, you know, the future Ring of Honor or the present Ring of Honor and the past Ring of Honor, you know, clashing for the title. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That that's good stuff. You know, it was a very Ring of Honor show. Um, I had a really hard time getting into them as a promotion in general because there's so much wrestling out there. Their presentations, for me, for my personal taste, left a little bit to be desired. But you and I always acknowledge they have some really great talent yeah. there. I am very interested to see. You know, I think that they can still get something out of the brand name of Ring of Honor. So maybe there is something worth, you know, looking into in terms of changing their business model or maybe selling to um, uh, interested parties who could then move forward with it mm-hmm. and and have a bit more of an indie take. Obviously, the the promotion is owned by Sinclair Broadcasting. Um, maybe if they were run more like uh, one of the indie promotions out there, like a GCW, maybe they'd have more success. Um, as a promotion in, in in this era where, you know, there's just, there's a lot of competition out there in the indie rings, you know, GCW, they're about to run the Hammerstein. They are mm-hmm. on fire these days. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, no, I, all in all, it was, it was, it was a fun show. It, uh, you know, like I said, it was a very ring of honor show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's run through these results real quick. Uh, Dragon Lee defeated Ray Horse. Uh, Rhett Titus became the new Ring of Honor TV champ. His first title win in, what, 15, 16 years with the company? They said he's been in Ring of Honor for 16 years, and I think they said this is his first singles title. Yeah, he defeated... So that's uh, awesome for that him. Is, that's really that is, great for That him, is cool. You know? He defeated uh, Dalton Castle, Silas Young, and Joe Hendry to get that belt. Josh Woods successfully retained the Ring of Honor Pure Championship against Brian Johnson. That was, that was a really, really good match. I really didn't know shit about either of these guys, mm-hmm. and I both... I, I left this match one and wanting to watch more of their stuff. I think Josh Woods has a match on Darker Elevation coming up here pretty soon. Oh, that's cool. That's neat. Uh, Shane Taylor defeated Kenny King. That match was that was a, a lot of fun. hell of a match. That, like that a was fun. that was brutal. They were doing some shit in that match. That was absolutely nuts. It was a street fight, mm-hmm. a grudge match type thing. Mm-hmm. That was a killer match. Yeah. Uh, Roxy defeated Willow Nightingale to retain the another Women of Honor title. Yeah. Another great match, really good stuff. Uh, you mentioned the uh, eight-man tag match: Brody King, Homicide, Rocky Romero, and Tony Deppen defeated EC3, Taylor Russ, Tracy Williams, and Eli Esom. And that's when uh, Adam Shear, Titan, formerly known as Braun Strowman, showed up. Um, oh, there it is. Rob Zerva has it. Josh Woods versus Sean Spears on AEW Dark tomorrow. Cool. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Briscoe defeated you, Rob. Uh, defeated Matt Taven, Mike Bennett to get the uh, Ring of Honor tag titles back, and they were confronted that was- by. Sorry. That was probably my uh, my match of the night. That yeah. was a really good match. Yeah. It was a really, really good match, yeah. And then FTR comes out to confront the Briscoes afterwards. And then main event, Jonathan Gresham defeats Jay Lethal to win the Ring of Honor Championship. It's pretty cool. They brought back the original yeah. ROH title. Yeah, according to uh, Fightful Select as well, they had some notes uh, this weekend on the, uh, on the whole thing. Apparently that match had to be cut down. Hmm. in time by about 10 minutes. So I think it's like a 15 minute match originally supposed to go or like 25. So who knows what that could have been kind of like the all out main event. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. Who knows what it or the all in uh, main event rather. Um, who knows what it could have been. It was still a solid match. Um, and it was cool to see the uh, original ring of honor title. And you could tell it's, it's great because you could tell it actually, you know, it's so great that Gresham's the last guy to have it because or at least for now, it, he seems like the, the sort of the most, ring of honor sort of legacy type guy, you know, like he really would fit in perfect with that class back from 2005 or whatever mm, it was. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. Know? Totally. Totally. Uh, we got a raw tonight, two segments announced Woo! first Bobby Lashley to address his brutal attack on Biggie, Kevin Owens, and Seth Rollins. And then Street Profits to battle Ray and Dominic Mysterio in RK Bronament Finals. So I imagine the winner uh, of this faces RK Bro at January uh, one. January one. January one. Uh, yeah, that's cool. I look, Raw was decent last week. Hopefully yeah. they'll you know what in a positive attitude. It's been a weird day for me with the power going out, but uh, I feel like things will turn around. Maybe there'll be a fun Raw. Today. There you go. Going to it with a good <laughs> attitude. Trying to. That's a good philosophy, Steve. You think good, good, maybe good will happen. Look out my own personal interest, 24-7. Uh, no, man, I'm telling you. Hey, if anybody, we, we mentioned this in the pre-show, but we'll mention it now. 
if you haven't watched Succession, if you're not in it, you got to watch Succession. It's such a great show. It's it's a great. I don't know when our embargo for spoilers is going to be done with, but like you, me, and the Enforcer, we need to have a long chat about it for the friendos. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, man, because it it stuck with me last night. It was uh, the, the the most apropos uh, thing that I saw was this was uh, Succession's red wedding. Yeah, what we saw last night. Yeah. Man, it was oh, it stuck. Yeah, it stuck with me too. It stuck with me too. Uh, Wrestle Dude asks, which wrestlers do you think would make the best and worst Santa Claus? Happy Corbin to be the worst. That'd be terrible. It'd be an awful Santa Claus. You know who I think would make a great Santa Claus? Yano. That's a good answer. Wouldn't that be an amazing? I mean, the only thing that kids would get would be his DVD. You get a but YTR VTR. Probably a really cool DVD. I've not. Seen I've it. seen clips, and the whole time they're trying to make Ishii laugh. That sounds awesome. Uh, Patrick good. Sparks says, "What Ring of Honor stars would thrive on main roster dead but E, and who would be bungled the most?" Oh, uh, main roster WWE. Shit, I don't know. Who's like generic person they could just mold? Who's giant? Bronze, uh, what's his face? Titan. Titan. <laughs> <laughs> he's not really a Ring of Honor guy, but he's there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Titan. Oh, man. I don't know. Um, I feel like Shane Taylor would do well in WWE. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. I'm trying to think of somebody else. Um. You know, isn't it weird that like we, there was a universe where Dalton Castle was in NXT? Wasn't he supposed to go there and then he got like injured a bunch? Yeah, he hurt his back. Uh, that was a bummer. I know. He was a free agent. I think he won the Ring of Honor title. And uh, I think I think he would have been. I think if you sort of tweak the gimmick a little bit for Dalton Castle, that dude has everything you'd want for main roster. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that's totally true. But unfortunately, like at this point, he's like, you know, not 23 so they're never going to pick him up. Yeah, probably not. Sean Lath. What a drag. I mean, isn't it? Let's just sort of pause here. Isn't it a drag that like out of all the tremendous free agents on the market, like if you just take away the WWE releases, WWE's not going to pick up any of those people. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Like that's such a drag. Like maybe like maybe they'd pick up like Roxy. Maybe. Maybe. Because she's younger. Mm-hmm. But like what a bummer. I, I, I'm, I'm all for them reaching out to the college ranks, getting, you know, fresh athletes and, yeah. and building from the ground up. That's fine. That's work for them. Great. And you know, if they can find the talent to do that, great. But like, what's the problem in like sort of keeping a wide variety of I know. pickups I know. from like all over the place, like the independent ranks from college uh, athletic programs. Mm-hmm. It's just a bummer. It is. <laughs> I know. A, I know. It's a total bummer. It is. It is. Uh, Sean Lathrop asked my birthday is this week. What wrestler would you want to throw you a surprise birthday party? Oh, man. A surprise birthday party. I mean, it's the new day. I think it's a new day. You get pancakes. I you love know, pancakes. They're like the answer to like half these questions. I know. Whenever it's anything, what cool thing would you like to happen? It's always, let's just take them out of it. Oh, all right. Dan Housen. All right, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that dude, cra- that dude cracks me up. Uh, I'll say, I'll say, uh, Hangman Page. He's happy now. Oh, that's good. He likes his spirits. He likes his his booze. And then yeah, yeah the Dark Order. Yeah. We'll we'll come Dark Order. We'll come yeah. hang out and party too. Should be fun. You know what? I'll go with Team Taz. I'm gonna go with Team Taz. I'd like a Team Taz birthday celebration. All right. You want? You I was want legitimately. Your, you want your barbecue? I was legitimately lay, heartbroken. Huh? Yeah, I was heartbroken when Dante Martin swerved them. I was like, they reached out to him. Why is it so dark in here all of a sudden? They reached out to him, and then he let you know they're like, hey, we really like you, man. We want you on our side. There was never anything nefarious there. No. They just were like, hey, we want to recruit you. Yeah. We think you're terrific, dude. Uh, Greg Morris, Briscoes versus FTR at Winter is Coming or Battle of the Belts. It'd be interesting at Battle of the Belts. You got the Ring of Honor uh, tag champs versus the AAA tag champs. That could be cool. That'd make a lot of sense right there. Mm-hmm. Like if they actually, if they, if, if the idea of Battle of the Belts is you bring in, like if they're, you bring in a bunch of other people. Like, who wouldn't want to see Hangman versus uh, uh, Adam Page versus Gresham? How cool would that be? That'd be great. Or uh, or or Page versus uh, 
moose for that matter mm -hmm. if you want to like bring in a bunch of different shit that'd be kind of cool that'd be really I'd be cool. for that that'd be really cool gareth asks will 2022 be the year you return to an indie show if so sacramento based shows only any desire to check out hood slam west coast pro or even an la based gcw event uh yeah yeah man yeah yeah because like okay so here's here's my thing i need more shows to run saturdays because if I'm going to leave, if I'm going to go like a couple hours out, Saturdays are kind of the thing to do yeah. because Fridays we've got work. Yeah. And then like Sundays, uh, you know, it's like we got to work the next, the next day, day and Monday. we're old. We can't like stay up late. So like, yeah, like Saturdays, I think I want more places to, to run Saturdays. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally down. Uh, I know um, uh, Prestige Wrestling is coming out here yeah, March. in March. Yep. Um, West Coast that. Pro runs relatively close they're just in the bay area so i'm going to try to check out some of those shows we got supreme pro wrestling out here in elk grove mm -hmm. um so i'm going to try to check out some of those shows but no yeah 2022 i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm definitely gonna try to get back into going to live show. i definitely want to make a trip down to la and to either check out a pwg or like an la fight show uh, Joel Hartman, if Deanna Parazzo wins the Ring of Honor World uh, Women's Championship from Roxy, who will take uh, take it from her next? Oh man, I think it's I think it's like really early to tell, but I would say a really great name who had a really terrific year was Willow Nightingale. Mm -hmm. She just fought Roxy mm -hmm. in that title match. Um, she's got charisma just. It's insane levels of charisma. Um, and she's a terrific wrestler, so I'd go with Willow. Good answer. Good answer. Uh, Rosie Knight, with the year almost at an end, what are your biggest ups and downs of the entire wrestling industry? I think the top down is is, is all the releases. So many people it's, losing their job. Yeah. It's, yeah. It sucks. It yeah. sucks. I mean, honestly, there's there's no better answer than that. I mean, you could, you could talk about the NXT rebrand, but at the end of the day, like nobody really on mass lost their jobs because of that. You know, you can talk about, well, yeah, ring of honor going out of business. People yeah. lost their jobs there, Yeah, but just the sheer volume of WWE releases was, was heartbreaking. Really Absolutely was. heartbreaking. It really was. Yeah. As far as top up. Uh, speaking of people having work, I'd say the return of independent wrestling. Mm -hmm. I think we saw that come back in a major way. And that meant a lot of people got paid. It's not the same as having like a full-time contract, but I'd say, you know, the more outlets for wrestling, the better. So yeah. I think that's probably my top. Up. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Organ Grinder, have you considered the numbers don't lie kind of show, but for non-wrestlers of the business, like the Jim Rosses and the Paul Heymans. At some point, we might we might explore adding that every, I don't know, a couple months or so to numbers don't lie. Like, you know, hey, let's put Heyman, Heenan, and... Uh, I don't know another manager, Alejandro. What was that guy's name? Oh, Umaga's yeah. guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Umaga. Oh man, I forget his name. MVP. We'll say MVP. Yeah, MVP's good. Yeah, Jim Cornette. There you go. Another legendary manager. I don't know why I drew a blank there. Uh, Joseph Gonzalez says, "Can you name every single person that Kane has won the tag team championships with?" What is this? Quizlemania? Whoops. X Pac. X Pac. Of course, Undertaker. Here, I, I go, then you go. So I said X-Pac, you say Taker. Yeah. Um, he also won it with... Uh, wait. He won it I got with... One. I got one. No, it's my turn now. All right. What well, can I step whoever, in? Whoever, sto no, whoever stops first loses. Um, Big Show. Did he? <laughs> now I have to look it up. Now, now you I have to look it up. Look it up. Well, let's see. Why you, big show. While you do that, Beans from the East says, Hey, friendos, went to final battle Saturday. It was a great experience. A lot of talent walked around talking to fans, and it was truly a family there. Felt really bad for Taven. He said he didn't want to leave the arena because it would be real, and that hit his soul. So, yes to, to Big Show? Yeah, man. They won They won a bunch of them. Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryanson. Oh yeah, team L no. Yeah. Um, Don't look at chat. Well, they put shit. All the answers. J, J Rage is. I know they I know. they're putting in the answers here. Al Snow really? RVD. Shane. He won the tag title for Shane. Man, my memory is shit. Same. 
There was also about terrible. seven years I didn't really watch WB, so I would have missed all that. Uh, Ford Age, if Sami Zayn becomes all elite, should he go back to his El Generico gimmick? I feel like he's outgrown it and has more potential retaining some of his current gimmick while leading a faction. I actually agree with that. I think he should. I think he should return as Generico to sort of close that circle, and then unmask and be like, "I'm whatever his name is, Rami, whatever Rami was that? What is his name? It's something along those lines, yeah." You know, or he, um, yeah. he, he could he could he could be El Generico and and be himself too. You know, he can have multiple personas. Rami Sabe. Okay, if I'm pronouncing that right, which I'm probably not. Uh, uh, oh, this is oh man, this is great. This is my favorite question. Juan Guerrero Jr. Mister Triple Mania says, if you recall back in the day, there was an NWO Japan, mm-hmm. but now. Who would you include in an NWO Mexico using luchadores from Triple A? Well, I mean, there's one obvious answer. Chessman. Chessman, yes. Chessman and Pagano. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> oh, uh, uh, Rey Scorpion. Okay, that's good. Um. I'd put uh. I put uh, Bobby Fish oh. in there. <laughs> Bear Winning has the right answer. Heel Ref. Yes. Heel Ref is definitely there. Sam Adonis has got to be in it. Oh, gosh. Um, and then I guess who's there? Hogan. Would that be like a, a, a Blue Demon Jr.? I guess so, yeah. Or Dr. Wagner Jr.? What would be like oh, a huge... Psycho Clown, because he's like super baby face right now. Have him oh, okay. Him. There you go. Psycho Clown. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, Fudgy here says Hook is the hottest thing on the planet. And AEW decides to start a line of Hook snacks. What would be some flavors that would feature various AEW talents? Extra points for puns. So obviously, uh, his would be some sort of barbecue uh, uh, potato chip because that's what he was eating when he shared chips with Dante Martin. Looked like barbecue legs. Yeah, that's good. Um. Oh, so I man. feel like I feel like for Kenny Omega, you do some sort of Funyun type thing, because but the shape him like the Omega sign rather than circles. Oh, I like that. That's good. Funyuns. Um, uh, well, Jr.'s barbecue flavor chips. That makes sense. Good. Good. Um, I don't know. Is there like a Team Taz? I feel like Team Taz would be like a salt and vinegar type thing. That sounds good. I don't know. I'm 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 low on puns right now. Yeah, me too. I'm sure Chat will come up with some really I good know, ones. They're 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 super clever. Let's see here. Uh, Kayla Vision here says my question is, and then just leaves it blank. There's no actual question there. I'm looking. I, I clicked on it. I don't. I don't see any actual question. Yeah, here. I saw that too. She just. She's. I don't know. I don't. Know Man, I forgot. We got to do a Church of Friendos. Uh, oh, uh, holiday party. Holiday right? office party. Yeah, we should do that. We gotta. We gotta figure that one out. We've got. We got till the end of the year, right? Do holiday parties ever happen after Christmas? No, I think they oh, gotta happen not. before Christmas. Oh man! Wow. All we right. got uh, what, to what twelve days to work it out. So essentially, right. this weekend, I guess. Or sometime during yeah, the week. Yeah, right. What are you doing Sunday? You want to do it Sunday? I don't believe I, I have anything going on this weekend. I'll ask them what they're because I think she said she's doing something on Saturday. All right. Maybe. But uh, yeah, maybe for Sunday we'll do something fun. We'll play some games or some shit. That sounds fun. Uh, oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Uh, White Brownie, if you could choose one of these match types for either AEW, that would be a bring back. Which would you choose? World War Three, King of the Road, Canadian Rules, or Chamber of Horrors? It's Chamber of Horrors. Chamber of Horrors, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's cool. All right, do we end up, do we have enough content for an episode? Yeah, we're, we, good. We we're good. Now? We're good. We're <laughs> good. That's the smoothest transition to ending a show. Um, all right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for bearing with us as yes. I had to change my location with my mobile studio. Yes, apologies um, for the delay and getting the show going and getting it up. But uh, yeah, we blame weather. 
We did yeah, it. We did it. We did it. Uh, so thanks for watching, everybody. We appreciate it. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. 